Potter Studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make a glowing wire sculpture using wire and crepe paper. The first step is going to be drawing out your design, what kind of animal you want to make. After you've drawn your design, we're going to make it out of wire. So we'll be making our sculpture out of wire and I'll show you different ways to connect the wire. The third step is covering it with your crepe paper and all you're using is tape to attach it. And you will be able to see the tape, but don't worry about that because when it's displayed, it will have lights inside of it and you won't be able to see the tape. And after you cover it with crepe paper, you can display it. So you can grab any pow battery powered light, put them inside of it and display it in your classroom, in your house, wherever you are making these sculptures. These are the supplies that you need. You need wire and I'm using 32 gauge wire. I'm going to be using this white covered wire just so you can see it a little bit easier but it doesn't really matter what color it is you're not going to be able to see it because we're covering it with crepe paper. Just make sure it's about 32 gauge so that it's strong enough so that when we put the crepe paper over it it doesn't just bend and destroy the sculpture. You also need crepe paper. I'm using this Creativity Street crepe paper. This is made by Paycon and they sponsored this tutorial and this crepe paper is awesome because once you have the wire sculpture underneath it will stretch over the wire and make it look really nice and uniform when we're finished and it's really easy to attach with tape but also comes in a variety of colors it is bleed resistant so if you choose to attach it a more advanced way to attach it is to use glue and a paintbrush. I'm going to be using tape just to make this tutorial a little bit more simple. I like the clear tape because these sculptures will be shown glowing, so you won't be able to see the tape when they're displayed. And it's also flame resistant, which is why I thought of making a glowing sculpture with it, because we're going to be putting lights inside, and these aren't very hot lights, but still you always want to be safe and you always want to be careful when you're using lights. You need tape to attach it, and I'm just using scotch tape, and you need a light. Any battery powered lights. These are just some that I found at my local craft store. You need scissors and the nice thing with 32 gauge wire is that it can be cut with scissors. It's a little bit safer to use and it's a little bit easier to use. And that's it. So let's get started. Step number one is choosing an animal that you're going to be making the sculpture of. I would recommend something with ears but you can choose whatever animal you want. So think about your favorite animal and then draw a sketch of its head. I'm going to be choosing a fox. You want to draw it from the front and this is going to be a solid color so you don't need to do too many details in your sketch. You also want to draw it from the side. So I want the ears to be back just a little bit and then I want it to have a nice pointy nose. Draw it from the front and from the side and we're going to be putting a little bit of a neck on these just so it will stand up. And then you're ready to start. So we know we need a circle, we need this shape of an ear, and then we need a pointy nose coming off of it. Now you're ready for step two and in step two we're going to be making the skeleton with wire that goes underneath your sculpture. Artists call this an armature. Grab your wire and the first thing I want to make sure you can do is attach wire. Let's try to attach this piece to this piece. There's a few different ways to attach wire and the first way to attach it is just to loop it around like this, right? That's attached but it's also going to slide around. So if we don't want it to slide around, what we can do is wrap it a little bit tighter, especially this fabric covered one. It's not gonna slide as easily if I pinch it really hard with that. Also, what if we need to attach two pieces of wire like this? What you want to do is you want to loop them around each other. So first I'm going to loop this one around this wire and bring it back like that just like I did before. But then I'm also going to loop this one over this way. So now we formed a chain and if you want to make it really strong, you can just wrap it around itself at the end so it's kind of not going to come apart and do the same thing on the other side. So just twist the edge around and then you've made a really tight ugh, bond and that's not gonna come apart. Now that you know how to attach the wire, what you're going to do is make the skeleton. But we're gonna be just making a shape that's going all the way around. So we're going to make like a ball right now. So what we do, we take our piece of wire and we want this one to be really round. So I'm just trying to link it at the very ends and we're just pinching the ends around each other just like we did in the other one and then just kind of twist it around itself so it doesn't come undone. All right, we have our first piece. Now we want to attach another piece to it. And we're gonna start right at the bottom and pinch it. You want this to be really tight because you don't want this to slide around. You want it to stay where you put it. So I'm just using my finger to twist it around. Bend this part out and we're going to make another circle. And we're gonna wrap it around the top once and bring it back down to this side. And then make sure you wrap it so that it is staying secure and it's not sliding around. This one is sliding around a little bit. You can use the other pieces of wire to hold other pieces in place. And remember, if it's sliding around, you just might wanna make it a little bit tighter so it won't slide as much. So now we've made this simple circle and we wanna just add maybe two more pieces of wire to make this a little bit stronger. And you do the same exact thing. You loop it on the bottom and it's a little bit easier to get it to stay now that we have more pieces there. Loop it around the bottom, bring it up around the top, loop it once, and then bring it back down to this side. 
And if you're wondering how to know how much to have there, just think about half of it needs to be there. Then bring it back and secure it at the bottom just by wrapping it around itself. Make sure that it's strong. And then let's just bring one more piece this way. Do the same thing. We start on the bottom. Try to find that open space that's a little bit bigger and bring it through. Loop it once. Bring it back down to the bottom. And you want to just, I'm trying to make it stronger, so I'm just going to put it right down here over the top of these ones and wrap it around so it doesn't come undone. All right, now we want to just fix the shape and make it look a little bit more round. If things got smashed, you can fix them. And if some of them are just a little bit shorter, it should still be okay. But you don't want one jetting all the way out. That might make it a little bit hard to do the next step. Now what we're going to do is put pieces of wire across this way. And we're going to do it the same way. Choose one to attach it to. Make sure that it's tight and doesn't slip around. So I'm going to wrap it around that wire a few times. And then you just want to come across and you're going to start looping it around those pieces. And don't worry if as you're pulling it, these pieces of wire get bent and moved. It's okay. You can just move them right back into the place where they were before. And I'm not as concerned with these ones slipping up and down, but I am trying to make it a little bit tight. As you can see, I've run out of my wire. I'm just going to cut a piece that I can fit in there. So with your scissors, you can just cut a smaller piece to fit across that. Make sure this rogue wire is attached so it's not like going to poke through your crepe paper when you attach it. And then just keep stringing it through. So we're wrapping it around one and going to the next. And when I get to the end, I want to just make sure it's wrapped fairly tight. Adjust your shape. And then what you want to do is that same thing, but you want to add one up here and one below it. I'm going to start on top. Begin by wrapping it around it. The first one definitely needs to be tight because you don't want it to move around very much. And then just start bringing it across. When you get near the top, it's a little bit harder to string the wire through, but just remember you can bend it back into shape, so don't be frustrated if it keeps changing some of these other wires. Okay, once you're finished with that one, go ahead and move to the one that's on the bottom. Make sure your first one is attached tight, and then you're going to loop it around and bring it across the rest of those wires. To make, I always think you're just making another smaller circle on the top. So if you get confused, just look at it and try to make a circle going along the top of it. This one is not quite reaching, so I might have to put one more piece right in here. These wires can get sharp, so be careful not to poke your fingers when you're doing these steps. So now we have the shape of the head and you can make it longer by pulling it. You can smash it and make it rounder. And when you put your shapes on it, your, your ears, your noses, the different appendages that you're going to add, you can choose where you want to add them. This isn't necessarily the top or the bottom. So look at the shape and figure out which side you want to be the top, which side you want to be the bottom. In my case, I'm just going to keep this as the bottom because I think it looks all right. And now I'm going to add my fox ears. So I'm going to make each ear with one piece of my wire. And you kind of have to look at it and figure out where you want your ears. Leave a little extra and then make the shape of your ear. So this is my extra piece and this is the shape of my ear. And then I'm going to attach it with these two parts. But before I do that, I want to grab my next piece that I'm using for my next ear. I want it to be the same size. So I'm just going to match it before I put this on. So I have these two pieces for my ears that are the same size. Then I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to attach one ear, bring it across. I don't want to bring this ear all the way to the middle and then just thread your wire through. And then I kind of want my ear to be thick. So I have to decide, oh, do I want this to be the front? I want this side to be the front. So then I'm bringing my wire back up to the top of my ear, looping it around, and then I'm going to make a triangle. So if you have round ears, you do the same thing with this. Also, this is a similar way to make the nose, except the nose might have a few more pieces on it. And then I'm just going to attach my ear back here. You can have a flat ear. These are flat ears and they work, but I want this one to be a little bit thicker. So then just make your triangle. And if you have extra wire, just use your scissors to cut it off. I usually wait till I have both ears on before I change the shape. Now I'm going to take this other wire that I made for my next ear and I'm going to loop it over here. Attach it just by wrapping that wire around. Come back into the middle, loop this this one through and then I'm going to do the same thing I did with the other ear. After I loop this wire around, I'm going to bring it up to the tip of the ear right here, wrap it around once, maybe twice, and then bring it behind it to give this ear a little form. So then I have these two ears and definitely I'm going to make them more pointy because they're fox ears. As we're working, this shape might get flattened and smashed out, so make sure you pull it back out so it's round. Then for the nose on this one, I'm just going to be doing a pointy nose, but you, if you're doing a round nose, you would do it the same way. I'm just going to figure out about where I want the nose, and I want it to start at about here. So I'm just going to grab my wire, start it right in the middle. These loose ends, make sure you tuck them in. You just don't want any of them poking out. And then I'm going to bring this wire out forward like this. So this is kind of going to be the shape of my nose, and I can bend this middle shape and manipulate it however I want. 
I'm just wrapping the wire around twice to keep it strong. So you can see this is going to be the shape of my nose. And then I'm going to bring this piece up to the top right here and bring that out to the middle of my nose. And this isn't gonna go much further, so I'm just gonna wrap it around. So this is from the bottom. But I need to have a few more pieces of wire in this. And with this next one, I'm gonna start right on the tip of my nose. So you wanna just make sure your wire isn't slipping around too much. But when I make this, I can manipulate this, the profile, however I want with this wire right there. And then I'm just gonna bring this wire back down in, loop it around. And I'm gonna show you these steps, but make sure when you're making your sculpture, you might attach these in different parts than I do, and that's fine. Since I have extra, I'm gonna just loop it around so I have something that's gonna keep these wires from spreading out too much. So kind of the same thing we did with the shape of the head. Now we're gonna do that around the nose and just make a loop around the whole thing. Once you get back, make sure it's secure and then just wrap your wire so that the end is pointing in. And if it's long, just cut it off. If I want this nose to be a little bit pointier, I can adjust it like that. Now what we wanna do, once you have the head shape, the shape of your ears and your nose, if you have horns, you would do them the same way that you do the ears. Then you wanna make the base or the neck. We're gonna take our wire and we're going to make a circle that is smaller than the width of the head because it's going to be the neck. So make a circle, wrapping it around like this, and you're gonna have some extra wire and what you wanna do is attach it onto the fox. And you can make this as tall or as short as you want. Necks are different. So I'm just attaching the first piece and I'm just wrapping this wire around the fox's head and then I'm going to do the same thing with this extra piece of wire. I'm going to wrap it around the fox's head. And then you're just going to use your wire to attach your neck to the main part of the fox's head. So if you look kind of from the side, we're just putting the neck in. And we're going to attach it around the middle part of the bottom. And what I like to do for this part is make my wire a little bit shorter, but long enough that you have space and room to wrap it. And remember, wrap it tight so that this isn't sliding around. I'll wrap this around right here. There's a lot of ways to do this, and if you see a better way to do this than I'm doing it, then do it your way. And then I'm just gonna add two more pieces to the neck to make it strong, and we are ready to cover it with our crepe paper. Okay, and then after you attach those, just make sure it will stand up by itself. If it's too front heavy, you might need to just adjust the neck, and we're ready to do the next step, which is covering it with crepe paper. The third step is covering it with your crepe paper. And you, all you're using is tape to attach it. And you will be able to see the tape, but don't worry about that because when it's displayed, it will have lights inside of it and you won't be able to see the tape, especially if you use the clear tape. So grab your crepe paper, your sculpture, tape, and crepe paper, and let's get started. It's the easiest to cover the small shapes first and then cover the big shapes. So we're going to be covering the ears and the nose, and then we'll cover the whole head. You could just put it over and bunch it, but all of those bunches are gonna take up the light. So I think it's easiest to attach it in little strips. So cut out a few strips of the crepe paper that are not quite as wide as the whole head. So I'm putting a piece of tape on it, on the crepe paper, and then I'm just wrapping it around itself. So that's what it looks like on the back side. And that attaches it and makes sure that it is secure. And then when I bring it around the front, I am going to stretch it a little bit just so it fits around the back. And I'm going to tape this to this piece. You can probably even find a better way of doing this. And then I don't need all of this extra crepe paper. You can just cut off the extra pieces that you don't need. And then you need to figure out, almost like wrapping a present, how you're going to bring that back down in. So I'm just going to fold the top around itself, and maybe even cut off a little bit more, and then I'm just going to tape this part down. And there is my ear completely covered. And the back, yeah, you can see the tape, but don't be too concerned with this, because once we put the lights inside, you won't be able to see any of the tape. Once you have completely covered it in crepe paper and tape, how you decide to finish this is up to you. There's so many different ways, but you could cut out other pieces of crepe paper, put noses, put eyes, put different things on these and decorate them. Or you can just keep it the solid color. Grab your lights, put them inside, and I'll show you what this looks like in the dark. So you can display these anywhere. You could put them out on your front porch, you could put them in a classroom. So take this project, use these skills that I've taught you, and make something of your own. So I hope you enjoyed making this animal. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. Have, have fun with this and have a great day. We'll see you around on YouTube.